The reality is, at the end of the day, squash is a really expensive sport. And I just want to make it clear, I'm not here to complain or cry that it is an injustice to the sport or anything along those lines. I'm just here to simply raise awareness. Now, anyone who's played squash or competed in a tournament will know that the prize money is very limited. In terms of the sport of squash itself, prize money and sponsors are quite limited to a very small percentage of players that are playing the sport. Often, and I want to make sure that I say this, not always, but often, those who rise to the top are those that are able and fortunate enough to land either a huge sponsor or have family and friends which are willing to back them and help them and support them financially to turn their passion of playing squash into a full-time career and a basically make a living from the sport. It seems independently for those of the squash players that reach the top three or top four, it seems that only those players who reach the upper echelons of the sport, and I mean top three and top four in the world, are able to make a full-time living from the sport of squash. Even then, a lot of their success or financial success relies highly on sponsors. At the end of the day, what I'm saying is that just doing and excelling well in the sport of squash will not guarantee success or will not guarantee that someone can actually make a living off it or even attend all the tournaments and participate completely, which will give them enough points and experience to actually compete at the upper levels of the sport. And because of that, the financial component as well as the expenses associated with the sport, you will find that many squash players, especially in African countries or in countries where there isn't a lot of government support and backing, fail to actually reach their dreams or to actually reach almost anywhere in the sport because you need to play so many tournaments, you need to get so much exposure, you need to play and gain all the experience and tournament points. And a lot of the times those tournaments are held all over the world. In fact, I think it's very rare that we do have any of the platinum, gold or bronze events from the PSA held in any of the African countries except for Egypt. So with that being said, traveling to the UK or any of the European countries is really difficult for a lot of squash players and unfortunately because of that they cannot climb up the ranks and they cannot actually use that as leverage to get more sponsors or as leverage to make a full-time career from the sport and at the end of the day yes we can talk about the fact that there is prize money and how limited that prize money is but we need to actually look at the expenses that actually are incurred by squash players and even though the prize money might, might not be great, these expenses don't give discounts to squash players. The expenses are going to still stay the same irrespective of if someone's a squash player, a tennis player, or a hockey player, or a golfer at the end of the day. So some of these expenses we need to look at are things like accommodation. So as I mentioned, traveling to tournaments which are located in various locations, and some of them are very, I guess, unique destinations, expensive destinations, expensive areas, you'll find that accommodation is one of the biggest costs that needs to be incurred by a squash player. For a player to stay over a three-day or two-day tournament means that they would actually have to make sure that they've got accommodation for five days. So yes, there are ways to sort of, I guess, dance around this fact, and there are alternative measures that a lot of players can make, but this is one of the biggest costs that will be incurred by a squash player. Apart from accommodation, there is the coaching costs. So in order to really excel and exceed, I'm not saying that there are players who haven't done it without a coach, but coaching becomes really important. And that's one of the expenses that need to be incurred by a squash player. As mentioned, I always agree that, yes, you should have a coach, especially if you have ambitions of obviously climbing up the ranks or anything like that. Not that I have those ambitions. I'm not trying to be a professional squash player, but these are costs that are incurred by some of your top athletes. And with that, it's not only your squash coach, it'll be things like a strength and conditioning coach, your head or mental coach, and maybe even you'll find that you'll incur the services of someone like a chiropractor to make sure that you're playing well or help with your recovery process. There are things like physios as well as biokineticists where squash players will need their services in order to perform well. So they're all the types of coaches as well as recovery specialists that a squash player will consult. The nutritional component of squash or any sport is a really important factor at the end of the day. So you'll find that squash players have to incur the cost of obviously what it is that they eat, all of the supplementation that they require, all of the medication that they might require as well. So that is also a big cost. Not exactly the 
most expensive cost, but it can rack up and can add up at the end of the day. And these are the things that a squash player will need to fund by themselves, either through their prize money or through the help of others. Last but not least, as I mentioned, this really gets tied in with the accommodation costs, but travel costs. As mentioned, squash players will need to travel to different locations, to different arenas, and with those, you need obviously to cater for the traveling costs. A lot of that will be flight tickets, and unfortunately for a lot of squash players from African countries, it will also mean that they need to get their visa sorted out. So with the African countries and their passports, you will find that a lot of them, a lot of squash players will actually need to go to a visa center. So that already in itself is a cost where if you are not already living in Johannesburg or Cape Town, you need to travel to those locations, let's say just for South Africans, you need to travel to those locations. So that's already a travel expense, accommodation expense to make sure that you're there in time for your visa appointment, go through the whole process, pay for your visa fee, and then hope that everything gets approved before you actually even leave the tournament. So even going to a visa center for a specific tournament is a risk because you can get declined for whatever particular reason that it could be. Obviously, there will be the expense of flights. Flights are not cheap. There are the local flights as well as the international flights if it is that a player is playing the international tournament. So those are huge expenses at the end of the day. As I mentioned, at the end of the day, I'm not here to complain about it. In fact, this is the real reason behind the video. Many of you would have found this squash channel through a video titled The Most Talented Junior I've Ever Played Against called Luke Jacoby. Luke has actually been presented with a very unique opportunity to represent South Africa at a tournament, World Junior Opens, I believe, which is gonna be held in France. And this is gonna happen in the next 16 days. In order for Luke to attend this tournament, which is gonna be held in France, Luke Jacoby is raising funds in order to see this opportunity which has been presented to him obviously due to a lot of hard work and a lot of coaching and some of the other expenses that we've spoken about being incurred on his side he just needs obviously help to reach or jump over this final hurdle which will allow him to go to france and participate in this tournament and hopefully do really well at the end of the day i'm not asking you and i will never ask you to do something that i'm not willing to do but there are two ways in which you can help luke jacoby the first way that you can help him is by going to his backer buddy website so on his backer buddy website he has given obviously a lot more information about this tournament what the costs that he needs to cover are and also how much he's raised so far so with that i'll put a link in the description to the backer buddy website this is where you can log on to the backer buddy website and his profile specifically and help if you have any sort of spare change or anything that you can contribute to his cause to allow him to see this opportunity. He's obviously raised a bit and there have been some friends and family which have supported him. He still has a, you know, a bit of a way to go with respect to the target that he has set or with the requirements that are, are needed in order for him to actually see this opportunity. I understand and I know that not everyone has money. So there is option two. Option two is to share the backup buddy link or maybe even any of his posts or even this video with someone that you know, your friends, your family, your networks at work, if you can, maybe someone that you know is in that position that they can help him actually seize this opportunity and hopefully take this opportunity that he's been presented with and make something of it. At the end of the day, the squash community is a really small community, but at the same time, it is people like you and like me which can make a difference in other people's lives. I'm pretty sure we would all love to have the opportunity presented to us that we could go to an international tournament and some people might who are watching this China channel might have gone to such a tournament and known what it has done for their squash and for some people who wish they could have gone to such a tournament I'm pretty sure you know the excitement and the I guess joy that is has been bestowed upon Luke and the fact that there's just this one hurdle that is in his way in order for him to seize that opportunity I hope and I really plea that you have in, the, in your heart to actually help him out any sort of assistance that you can in order for him to make it to France and actually participate in this tournament. At the end of the day, as we all know, due to the fact that there isn't a lot of money in squash, squash is a sport that is driven a lot by passion and by community. So I'm asking the community, which is you and anyone that is watching this video to help Luke Jacobi out. Let's help him get to France. Let's help him seize an opportunity the opportunity that a lot of us wish we would have had and if any of us have had this opportunity 
we understand what it is that is required and how beneficial it will be for his squash. So if you can and if you're willing to and if you are able to or capable of helping with Jacoby, please reach out to him. As mentioned, I'll leave a link at the bottom of this video to his Backer Buddy page where we can help him. Anyway, apart from that, that's all I wanted to say. Take care and cheers. Bye.